Leafy Spurge has invaded thousands of acres, and it is still spreading. A century ago, settlers brought this unwelcome hitchhiker from Europe to the prairie grasslands. Now, insects imported from Europe may be able to help you reduce leafy spurge on your farm or ranch. With patience and a long-range plan, flea beetles can become an effective tool in your weed fighting program. We'll talk about the benefits that flea beetles offer you, how they work to control leafy spurge, and how to establish a self-sustaining population that can reduce leafy spurge to manageable levels. Leafy spurge is just one of many noxious weeds that infest our range and cropland. It is also one of the most destructive. Every year, this yellow scourge costs North Dakota farmers and ranchers an estimated $27 million in lost income. In the past, herbicides were the only option to control leafy spurge. Certain herbicides do help keep leafy spurge under control, but it's not always practical, desirable, or affordable to rely on herbicides alone. Chemicals are very effective on controlling spurge, but uh, there's a lot of places that uh, chemicals may not be, may, you may not be able to spray in. Uh, maybe it's in a, uh, along a, a river where there's a lot of water and trees. Uh, you can't get your equipment in there. Maybe, for, like out of here in the Badlands, for example, the terrain can be ch so rugged that it's difficult to uh, get your spray equipment in there. An integrated weed management program combines two or more methods to provide a more successful and cost-effective solution to the leafy spurge problem than any single method can achieve. If you have a leafy spurge infestation that has become too large to spray or is in an environmentally sensitive or inaccessible area, you may want to try flea beetles. Here's a dramatic illustration. After just four years, flea beetles brought this leafy spurge under control and allowed regrowth of range grasses in pasture land where cattle wouldn't graze before. You should be aware that not all flea beetle releases get results this dramatic. About 30% of our attempts result in successful flea beetle populations that reduce leafy spurge. In about 30% of our attempts, flea beetles get established but provide only marginal results. And in about 30% of our attempts, flea beetles just don't become established at all. But we do know that in many locations, flea beetles can have definite results controlling leafy spurge infestations. How do flea beetles work to reduce the density of leafy spurge? Flea beetles spend most of their lives underground in the roots of leafy spurge. Flea beetle eggs are laid in the soil around leafy spurge roots. After hatching, the larvae munch their way into the plant's fine, hair-like feeder roots. Eventually, the larvae reach the larger roots, where they really begin to affect the health of the leafy spurge plant. As flea beetle larvae feed, they reduce the plant's hardiness and stunt its growth. And as they bore into the roots, this damage may open a pathway for diseases and soil-borne organisms. Over time, between munching and boring and diseases, the leafy spurge plant dies. That's how you get from this to this. In many locations, flea beetles are proving to be an effective biological control measure against leafy spurge. They are inexpensive to establish. They only feed on leafy spurge and don't pose a threat to other crops and grasses. 
And with a little monitoring and help in spreading, flea beetles can be an effective control measure. How do you establish flea beetles on your farm or ranch? The key to integrating flea beetles into your weed control efforts is to set up an insectary, a breeding ground where you establish a self-sustaining flea beetle population that you can harvest and spread throughout your leafy spurge infested range and cropland. You should be looking for at least one to two acres of leafy spurge infested land to establish your insectary. If you put them in too small an area, they may eat themselves out of house and home. Your site also needs to be one where the flea beetles don't have to cope with much disturbance. It's best to find a location that won't be cultivated until the flea beetles are well established and where herbicides, mowing and burning will not be used in spring or summer when the adult flea beetles are above ground feeding. Now that you have selected a location for your insectary, find a spot with conditions that will be most hospitable to flea beetles for your first release. Flea beetles like sun. The more sun, the better. A south-facing hillside is an excellent location. They need spurge to feed on, but look for a location where the spurge is only moderately dense. You want sunlight to be able to shine through the plant's canopy and warm the soil where the flea beetles live. Another characteristic to look at when selecting a site is winter conditions. Flea beetles overwinter in the soil around leafy spurge roots. Flea beetles do best on sites where there will be snow cover in the winter. Once you've selected your site, the next step is to obtain a starter population of flea beetles. There are four types of flea beetles. Aphthona nigriscutus. Aphthona cyparissi. Aphthona flava, and the commonly mixed species Aphthona chevalina and Lacertosa. You can obtain free insects from your county weed boards. Many county weed boards sponsor flea beetle collection days each summer in mid-June and July. Or best of all, you may be able to obtain insects from a neighbor who has an established insectary with a population ready to harvest. After obtaining a starter population of beetles, place a stake where you will release them. Note the location on a map in case the stake is knocked over or lost. It's also a good idea to make a note which species you've released on the site, how many insects, and the date of release. This is especially important if you're releasing different species or at multiple sites. It helps you to know what you've tried in case your first attempt is not successful. Releasing the insects couldn't be simpler. Take your container, whether it's a net, a bag, or a box, and dump the contents right at the stake. Don't sprinkle them around. Flea beetles are gregarious insects, and if you spread them too thin, you reduce the likelihood they will be able to mate. The flea beetles you've released are adults that should be ready to mate and lay eggs. The eggs hatch eight to 10 days after they are laid around the leafy spurge plant roots. The larvae which emerge feed on the roots of leafy spurge throughout the remainder of the summer and fall. Flea beetle larvae overwinter in the soil. As the soil warms in the spring, the larvae become active again, continuing to feed on leafy spurge roots until they move to the next stage. The larvae will begin to pupate in May and emerge as adults in early June. Adults emerge from the soil to feed and mate from June through early August. A single female flea beetle will lay up to 250 eggs a season in the soil around the leafy spurge plant's roots. A successful flea beetle insectary will produce one large generation a season. The key is leaving the site undisturbed during the spring and summer mating and egg laying season. Once you've released your flea beetles, you want to give them a hospitable environment that will promote the growth and spread of the population. 
don't spray insecticide within a quarter mile of flea beetle sites during June and July. Don't spray herbicide on the sites because you don't want to kill the flea beetle's food source. But you should spray around the perimeter to keep the leafy spurge from spreading. Now your next step is to monitor the progress the flea beetles are making in getting an effective population established. During the summer you make your release, leave the site alone. Resist the urge to take samples to see how your population is doing. You don't want to disturb the flea beetles while they're adjusting to the new site and laying their first batch of eggs. The following summer, you will want to take a sample at the site to see how things are going and whether your insects survived their first winter. Pick a warm, sunny day in late June or early July to take your first sample. The temperature should be at least 70 degrees and there should be little or no wind. The insects crawl up to the tops of the plants while the sun shines and go underground when it's windy or cloudy. Your sample sweep will be more productive if you do it on a warm, sunny, still day. Your flea beetles will fall into the net more easily when they're up at the top of the plants. So plan your sample sweep around noon while the sun is shining its brightest. Um. What I do when I go into, when you're looking at monitoring a site, when you're walking in towards your stake, what I have done in the past is I have swept into my site. And each time I take my sweeps, I go as a process of five sweeps. I walk in five steps and sweep in those five sweeps. And then I look at what my population is. And I dump out behind me each time instead in front of me because I don't want to you know, keep collecting the same insects. And I do that five times into my stake. During your first sample taking, if you can sweep any insects, that's the sign that a population is getting established. In the course of the next three years, you'll be able to observe the insect's effect on the leafy spurge in your site. You're going to find a small area of depression. Usually it averages anywhere from three to a five foot diameter. You're going to see where the plant height itself has dropped down. There's going to be less flowering in an area. Um, there's going to, you're going to see a little more litter, the dead cane, as they call it. Uh, you may start seeing some of the, a few of the grasses coming back that you never noticed before. By the second year, you should see that the area of leafy spurge affected by flea beetles is noticeably larger. If you don't see visible signs that the leafy spurge is being affected, or you don't find a large population of insects, you may want to introduce a different species of flea beetles. In the third year of a successful release, the dead zone is continuing to spread. Once your flea beetle insectary is well established, it's time to start new satellite populations. Flea beetles are high-rise apartment dwellers. They like to stay close to their neighbors. If left to their own devices, flea beetles will spread very slowly and often stay in small, isolated groups. Your job is to spread them out to the suburbs. After you make each sweep, look into your net. If you find a large number of insects in a single sweep, you found the flea beetle condominium complex. Stop right there and sweep the immediate area. If you can catch at least 500 flea beetles, that tells you that this is a large enough population, one that can be harvested and redistributed to new locations around your farm or ranch. Flea beetles can be an effective long-range solution to a long-range problem on your farm or ranch. One of many tools you can employ to combat leafy spurge. An integrated weed management program can be designed to suit the needs of your land and the type of agriculture operation you run. Develop an individualized program which includes a combination of herbicides, grazing animals, competitive grasses, and insect controls with flea beetles playing an important role. A single biological control agent like flea beetles may not solve your leafy spurge problem alone, but in concert with other control measures, using flea beetles can be a cost-effective and efficient method of control.